Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the greatest cameo player of them all? It's me, Fiendly, and I've unlocked a bunch of bonus content that we're going to take a look at in this final video for Cameo Elements of Power. Getting any passing grade of C or higher will unlock six bonus items, ranging from costumes that can be unlocked elsewhere in the game, to mm, lots of deleted content from earlier versions of the game that really is interesting to see. For starters, let's take a look at the Troll Song, finally learn something about the race we genocided. My face is green, my ass is too. If you think I'm mean, you should see my poo. It's nasty. That totally justifies all the killing, actually. I'm sorry I ever doubted Cameo's motives. This cutscene style test shows early versions of the way cutscenes were supposed to play out, and it demonstrates that with a deleted cutscene, wherein Cameo demonstrates an ability to kiss statues back to life, much like Callus's, and she's freed Spyro, who then makes out with her. That actually was Meepo. He was mentioned in an earlier video. He is actually a deleted dragon friend of Cameo's who was supposed to, I guess, summon elemental warriors. There's not much information on what he was supposed to do, but he originally played a big part in the game. Here's another deleted cutscene in that style with more information on Meepo. We also get to see a bit of Thena in action. She was quite the ineffectual character in the finished game. Turns out originally she was able to do things. Like tame an unruly whatnot book. You may notice that in a lot of this early content, Cameo is wearing a blue and white costume, which matches the rest of her family's costumes. Actually makes a bit more sense than the finished green costume, although it doesn't quite look as good, I think. Turns out Thena is, for some reason, the one who trapped Meepo in Carbonite. Quite regretfully. Supposedly, that statue of Meepo still exists in the finished game, according to one Chris Alcock, who is a developer on the game, but he is incorrect. I don't know if he was referring to an early build that it got deleted from, but I don't know, it's definitely not in the game. I've looked everywhere. The Water Temple's unlockables are especially useless. More early versions of cutscenes we've already seen, and you can replay the boss battles from there, but it's the least interesting of them. These are early group shots. We can see a lot of design changes in this first one from 2003. There's a weird bird with a whirly thing on his chest, and a tree, and Thermite looks awesome. And then the first 2004 incarnation. Deep Blue looks especially innocuous with his mohawk removed. And 40 Below looks like a regular snowman. But otherwise, they were pretty close to this finished version here. Just that a lot of guys looked a lot angrier in the end. Mm. 
And those bonus music tracks, like most of the music in the finished game, is serviceable, but not particularly interesting. <sighs> ah, here we have the old Evolve sequences. Pummelweeds is mostly the same, except for one terrifying difference. Realistic teeth. Oh yeah. The rest of them are pretty much the same. I just looking at like looking at the crude drawings in these animatics. Now it only turns into an animatic halfway through. So this is a fairly long cutscene, demonstrating many, many things that were changed over the years. Most of this is footage taken from one of the earlier Xbox builds. see that ogre pop up a bunch of times in these early videos, which is ironic because he's the worst part of the finished game. These cat people are having a dance-off. This is apparently how the sprite captures originally worked. That weird tunnel sequence. Here we can, we can actually see what these spiky plants that are in the finished game were supposed to do. Sprites also feature heavily in these early videos. They apparently used to play a bigger role in the game. And here we can see a completely deleted Elemental Warrior, who still managed to get a finished Evolve sequence. Some kind of cloud guy. And those are some more half-finished cutscenes. These concept art galleries are posted in the thread for easy viewing. Here we have some animatics featuring Kylem, who is not in the finished game. So this is all that I know about him. There he is, heading towards what appears to be Thorn's Pass. The title of this video calls it The Citadel. Looks kind of like a male cameo. And here he has taken leadership of the trolls, apparently. This is 
he's got his troll mask. He and Cameo have some kind of mutual heirloom thing. And he orders the trolls to attack Cameo. So that's certainly an interesting wrinkle of the story that it's kind of unfortunate that it got deleted. And here's another one of those agonizing looking evolve sequences. deleted warrior. This one didn't even make it into the 2003 group shot. Probably because he's just a toucan. Here's the longest of the bonus content videos. It's a whole plethora of deleted cutscenes from various incarnations of the game. These are apparently the Drock from when this game was a turn-based RPG. looks of this, Kallus also had a dragon friend that was deleted from the final game. They're having a full-fledged Pokemon battle. Purple spray looks a lot like Meepo.
like perhaps an early Lord Drock, who's actually filled with living trolls controlling him. Which makes it all the more morbid when he gets melted in the lava. Imagine what that ghost is supposed to be because it's so low resolution and there's so much bloom on him. Oh, I guess there's the purple sprite and Mupo in the frame at the same time, so they can't be too closely related. Or that damned ogre they were so proud of suspiciously Shrek-like ears. That's the last we'll be seeing of him. So you may have noticed that the sixth item in each of those lists was a cheats menu. So let's take a look at some of the cheats that we've unlocked. There's of course the obligatory big head mode. And warrior vision. Let's see what that is. Cameo's vision is the same, but it ruins all of the Elemental Warriors' first-person views. For the most part, it puts a color-appropriate filter over the uh, low-tier warrior's vision, and then compounds that with the high-tier warrior's vision using some kind of weird fractal image thing. <laughs> For the most part, Major Ruin's an exception. And Deep Blue has an appropriate fisheye lens for his. As does Flex. And apparently our ice elementals have been on acid this entire game. Because they are in a colorful wonder world. Yeah, that's a bizarre cheat of no particular use. As is this next suite of cheats, the screen effects. This first 8-bit mode looks atrocious. I can't recall any 8-bit games that looked all purple and green and Blinky squares all over the place. Objective in this part of the book. This looks a little bit more like an Atari, perhaps. Still pretty ugly. That's a bit more like it.
32-bit is basically the same thing, but a bit more washed out in color. I need to get more. 64-bit, you would hope, would be gigantic polygons everywhere. Why did I buy all this? But no, it's just 40 below-esque trippy colors everywhere. I could use a new cloth. I need to get more. This status page rounds up your progress so far. Why did I buy all this? Heat haze is most easily visible off in the far distance. Stop it. You can see the mountains out in the background are very wiggly. And this is just hellish. Especially the sky. Oh yeah. A little bit of film grain would have made this a lot more effective, I think. <laughs> Sepia tone doesn't really work when the environments are so wildly inappropriate. And Queen Thean is actually sitting on her throne. I can't find the mystic anywhere. It's strange that she should disappear so suddenly. There's her one line of dialogue in the entire game, obviously voiced by Cameo's voice actress, who isn't very good in the first place. The underwater messes up the light effects, but otherwise looks pretty good. Again, wiggling off in the distance. And the last one is this soft focus filter. Cheer up, mush! Oh! This jester is vying for our attention. Let's see what he has to say. It is a grey day when the sick must walk amongst the rose cheeks, and if I were a royal, I should be in fine health. Uh, health, get it? Yeah, he's got a number of lines, and they're all horrible. So that's the end of the screen effects. Let's get a sneak preview of the big head mode. Off in the dungeon, where we have those elemental trolls. Unfortunately, they're behind bars, but once we get a good look at them, you can see they are quite big-headed. I'm not sure why this was such a staple of the cheats menus back in the 64 days, but it was essential to have in this old 64 callback game. That's approximately all the amusement you can get out of Big Head Mode. So what else have we got? Fireproof is self-explanatory. Max health acts as though you have all the elixirs, which we already do, so it does nothing. But Elemental Override is an interesting one. It replaces the elemental effects of whatever warriors you have with either fire or ice. As you can see, Deep Blue's fire or water is setting everybody on fire. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with the oil, because the water washes off the oil before it sets the troll on fire. Otherwise, that would have been really cool. And of course, our ice warriors also set people on fire. Flaming 
flying snowball attack. For the most part, the fire version of this cheat isn't very interesting. The ice version will more than make up for it, I assure you. So let's check it out. Bravo! Major ruin! Pretty much all the warriors are incredibly useful when you have the ice override on. As such, cheats on this third page will delete your score if you try to use them. Because you can do things like this. Any second hit will turn off the ice effect. But most enemies will shatter after the first. good way to shatter them is with Major Ruin. Usually hits them twice with a Cyclone attack, which will instantly shatter them. Even Rubble is pretty useful with a Ice of Pride. This part of the book. But of course, Snare. the best one we're going to see is Thermite. So I'll save him for last. See some freezing bile. It's actually kind of boring. Oh well. So Thermite's bomb is going to have the most interesting effect. Mostly because of the napalm that it leaves behind. All that napalm's out, if we are any non-fire elemental, it'll freeze us, and anyone else who touches it. And then, because we're touching the fire, we freeze it, resulting in an infinite loop of freezing and unfreezing. Every time we unfreeze our momentum from when we enter the fire, it was a slightly further into it. So at this point, the only way to escape is to turn off the Elemental Override. I can't even switch warriors because the moment that I'm unfrozen is way too brief. About the warriors at your command. There we go, now it's back to regular fire, which thaws us pretty quickly. So that's the highlights of Elemental Override. Let's take a quick look at the big head mode. Look at that, it's a big head. Very exciting. Roll trolls actually look pretty ridiculous with big heads because they wear part of their orb as a hat, which also gets embiggened. But you definitely don't want to see me fight these guys because it took about 10 times as long as it did in the finished video. So we'll just get to these guys and we'll check out another cheat. Which is the troll mode cheat down there. Hard mode just gives them higher HP and makes them do more damage, but traitors is a lot more interesting. Anytime we kickflip a troll, he will turn against his comrades and start attacking them. Now, this particular fight is insanely chaotic already, and the enemies will fight each other regardless, just by accident, but traitor mode makes it even more so. I 
once we get enough people turned, we can really see the effects of it. Back in the corner there, so that's a bit of a troll melee. One of the guys who throws bombs is on my side now, so that's pretty useful. The AI coding in this game is pretty bad though, so it's not that useful. The Scaredy Trolls cheat works a lot better. Using that we can corral all the enemies down to the bottom of this ramp happens to have the only environmental hazard in the game that they will willingly run into while they're scared. They won't run into the turbines. That was the first thing I checked. But because this particular elemental hazard is on the floor, they will charge right into it. And kill themselves. That's the last of them. Let's skip ahead, see some other big headed trolls, specifically the glass jaw troll, whose head is his weak spot. And as we'll be seeing, it actually makes him slightly easier to kill when he's in big head mode. His weak spot there is gigantic. And even though I missed most of my opportunity to hit it, next time I open it up I'll show off that you can hit it right on the very edge and it still counts as a hit. Probably doesn't make a huge difference. This game's hitboxes aren't exactly 100% accurate anyway, but... Every little bit helps. The next thing I wanted to try was to see if big-headed enemies will drop big heads when they get jibbed. So I tossed a few of them in the thresher there. Turns out all their regular chunks and limbs will fly out of there, but their heads won't. Severed heads just won't fly off when big head ones are. It's kind of a waste cool to see gigantic heads lying all over the floor, but oh well. I also noticed that our elf allies also have big heads, which led me to the realization that they're not elves at all. They are reskin trolls that are running the traitor AI, which I tested it out, and if you use the traitor troll cheat, you can turn them into rebel elves who will attack each other and cameo given the opportunity. It's kind of a neat little touch. And down in this pit here, I just wanted to show off big-headed albino trolls and big-headed fire imps. It's pretty much a highlights reel of various big-headed trolls, I think. That shows off almost all of the cheats, but we have the new expert mode unlocked. That comes with the Power Pack DLC. You can see I've only unlocked two levels of expert mode because it's legitimately difficult. Really, really difficult, in fact. The most obvious differences are mostly cosmetic. Each of our warriors will automatically switch into their armor skins, which makes them look a bit like American gladiators. Also, the maps are all flipped. This ice path would normally turn to the left. It's not a huge difference, but it is kind of disorienting, which can lead you to make mistakes, which are not tolerated here on Expert Mode. We can immediately see that the enemy placement is much more difficult. The area's boss is now the first enemy we're going to see. We have access to all of the elemental warriors, but they all are at their base upgrades, which 
I complained earlier that the upgraded warriors kind of felt like that's how they were supposed to be, which means unupgraded warriors are pretty weak by comparison. I'm definitely used to having cluster bombs. Moving ahead a little bit to this albino troll introduction. The cannoneer makes this much more difficult, so you want to rush straight to the back to get that wall to collapse on him. But when you do, the albino trolls knock you off. And falling does about half your health. You cannot equip any of the crystal eyes in this mode, so regeneration and protection are out of the question. The only way to get health back is the giant hearts, which drop much, much more infrequently than they did in the original game. There's also several more albino trolls, which you do not want to see me fight. Back in this rural troll area, which is the first place I ever died in the LP, you can see that I have only the tiniest sliver of health. Because we have all the elemental warriors, we can access a way to heal in this room. It was here in the original level, but we couldn't get to it because we didn't have ash yet. We've got these fire cauldrons. We can use Ash's healing to heal in them, but we died first. Because it's very, very difficult. You can see I have no score for this level, even though I've beaten it, because I use cheats. We'll be seeing which cheats I used here in the Forgotten Forest, which I'm just going to stomp on. Because the last page of cheats is completely broken. Fireproof is not going to be of any health, and max health doesn't work. It still treats us as though we have base, no elixir health. Upgrade all warriors also does not work, but invincibility and one-hit kills, those work like a charm. So we can't lose, and winning is much, much easier. You can still see there's early introduction of certain enemy types. And also the puzzles are switched up a little bit, but it's not interesting enough to show off, especially now with cheats activated. So we're back here at the Water Shrine defense mission. And if we ignore that completely, we can find my favorite secret in the game. Back up in this obscure area that we would have no reason to go to and only has one entrance point find this troll mount. That's right, the trolls have rideable raptors, which only show up during this section of the game. During the water shrine defense. Once you've defended the shrine, this area is empty. Good look at the model. Actually looks pretty cool. It can't hurt these big ogre guys. But it can hurt everyone else. And it can shriek obnoxiously while it's doing so. It's kind of the biggest drawback. It's also very slow when it's attacking. Still, it's a raptor. The cameo is riding a raptor. And there's no reason that you would know about this in the game. The only way to find out about it is to do the wrong thing. And off in another obscure corner of the map during this supposedly important battle of elves versus trolls. The elf leader, Farron, is riding uselessly around in a corner by himself. So I engaged him in a little mounted combat. And neither of us can really do anything to hurt each other. 
So, like Kylan before her, Cameo rides towards the Thorn Pass to join the troll army. Here we can see a little later, during the Fire Shrine defense, our raptor friend is despawned. Never to be seen again, unfortunately. But that's actually okay. Because, once again, if we go the wrong way, swerve away from the shrine defense. You see some trolls fighting over here. And amongst them is another raptor. But it's different. It's got cannons. Making it a much better raptor. This guy will just one-hit kill everything. Very nice. This one I actually discovered by accident. I couldn't find this pathway leading up the mountain. And while I was wandering around looking for it, I wandered past that lava pool and discovered some trolls riding around on raptors. I thought I had discovered some content early, like later on trolls would be riding raptors all over the place. But it turns out I discovered a secret that I was not supposed to know about. Farron has wandered himself into the lava, making himself more useless than last time. But I accidentally killed myself trying to investigate further. We can see there's actually a second one of these raptors with cannons on them. So it's even easier to find this one. Just making sure no one can have a raptor but me. And a little more mounted combat with Farron. Got him stun locked, but this troll's gonna sneak up on me and knock me out of the loop. And I can't really lock him down again. It's quite possible that Farron is what Kylum ended up turning into over the various iterations of the game. Which would explain why they kind of bring up Farron as an important character and then never really speak of him again. Just have him wander around and appear in cutscenes silently. Another example of cut content. There he goes. And here we are after the Fire Shrine defense. There it is, safe and sound up there. And I discovered this cool horse crash animation. Look at that. And what I'm actually trying to do is another thing that that Chris Alcock guy from the beginning told the uh, he posted about it in a blog on Rare's site. He said that if you have the Power Pack DLC, that even more raptors will spawn after you complete the Fire Shrine defense. As with his other tidbit of information, he is completely incorrect. As we can see, all of the old raptors are gone. And I've checked the entire map, there's no new raptors either. That Chris Alcock guy really is Alcock. Back over here. No raptors. They're all gone. They're pretty much the only missable secret in the game, which is too bad because they're also one of the best secrets in the game. And with that said, that's all the bonus content that I have for you. I'd like to thank everyone very much for watching the LP, and I'd like to admit that my favorite part of doing this has been shoehorning in questionably appropriate music whenever I could. So I'd like to do that one last time as I show off the game's many alternate skins for the Elemental Warriors. Hope you'll indulge me, thanks again for watching, and take it away, Pummelweed.